I'm now going to run through process whitelisting and how I believe that process whitelisting can help you in protecting against ransomware and malware attacks. Okay, so I've got my desktop here. Uh, on the desktop, I've pasted two files. I've got a malware file and a ransomware file. The ransomware file is a, a JavaScript file. The malware is a bat file that contains the iCar test virus. So as you can see at the moment, if I click on them, they actually would, would have run. And the malware one that runs as well. The iCar test will propagate. Um, I've got no antivirus in place on there at the moment. It's all disabled. Uh, so what we're going to do is put whitelisting in place to block these uh, these attack potential attacks from happening. So if we go into Workspace Environment Manager console, go to System Optimization, Process Management, Process Management's enabled from when we did the blacklisting before. I've taken I've disabled blacklisting on there, and now we can do process whitelisting. So what we can do is enable process whitelist here. So what I'm going to do there is tick that box, and for the moment I'm just going to add one process in there. I'm just going to put command.exe in. Otherwise, I'd have to enter every individual process manually for that is, it, that is on the Windows Server 2016's app server. So I'm going to do it like that. So I've got the one process there and apply that. I'll just push that out to the server first. Oh, refresh it. Okay, so if we go back to system optimization now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to export the whitelisting settings. So all the system optimization settings, I'm just going to export them from uh, the Workspace Environment Manager. So I just take the system optimization box and then browse. And I'll just uh, locate this somewhere, put it in my documents. Okay, and now if I go to my, my documents folder, yeah, I've got this VUEM system utilities settings here. So I can open that up in Notepad now. I need to make it more viewable, so I need to install the XML plugin, so I'll just do that. Okay, so I've installed my XML plugin. I'm now able to view my XML file in a better format rather than just one single line of text. Okay, so I need to find that command.exe process. So just do a control F. Command.exe. Okay, so I found it in the list. So what I've already done, I've already got all the processes that are running on my 2016 server. Uh, the way I've done this was I've uh, I enabled a uh, process auditing on here and then collected the logs, uh, the security log from when UAT testing was taking place. And then I, I exported all those processes and then put them into a semicolon separated format like this. So all I need to do then is just copy all these processes. And I can just replace the command.exe there paste them in and I'll just save the file okay close notepad now don't do that anymore and all I have to do now is import this settings file back in and it should populate my whitelist processes so if I import settings click next browse to my file Just do system optimization settings, it's found the file in there. Import settings, yep, yeah, we'll have it replace all the settings. Click finish. And now, as you can see, it's populated all those processes into the whitelisting box. So now I can apply this and push it out to my Zen, ser Zen app server. Okay, and if we go back to the Zen app session, okay, so it's said so it's uh, pushed those out now. So if I try to open the malware, because remember last time it ran, it should block it this time. Yep, as you can see, the operation has been cancelled due to restrictions in place. And the ransomware one that should shouldn't propagate either. Okay, so that's fine. That's not propagated. Uh, and I believe it should still have my Word documents. Yeah, they can all open. 
and PDFs. Yeah, so it's not affected. It's, I've whitelisted all these processes, Word and PowerPoint and, PDF and uh, Adobe Reader and so on. So they're all fine. I can still open them. Uh, I think CPU stress, I don't think that's in my list. So that should be blocked when I open it, I think. Yeah, that's blocked. Yeah, so it works nicely blocking, blocking the uh, applications and malware from opening. So it's really good protection in case you do have a malware attack because it from testing I've done, it's that the pro it's blocked the process before the antiviruses are picked it up. I was doing one implementation with AppSense in uh, in early November 2016, and uh, the application whitelisting that I was using with Application Manager was picking picking up the virus before Sophos detected it. I think it took Sophos about 10 seconds before it detected the virus on there, which was really good. And it made me think, well, I've seen WEM and I noticed that that's got process whitelisting in, so wouldn't that be a great feature to use? So th these kind of things, malware and ransomware attacks, easy, so, so, uh, so prevalent in the, in the environment and so on. And uh, looking at what these attacks cost, I think a, a malware or ransomware attack they reckon the uh, the lasting effect of it is 30 odd days, and the uh, and the cost for that is around about two and a half thousand pounds per day to three thousand or three thousand dollars per day. So over 30 days, you're looking at a cost of seventy five thousand pounds or ninety thousand dollars. So it's a lot of money, and so the savings and the return on investment on web is uh, remarkable. Uh, another way, another uh, thing you can put in place to uh, stop ra ransomware attacks is a lot of them come through email in JavaScript files like the one that's on the desktop, but you can also put in place a file type association. So you could also set up a JavaScript file type association and instead of having it run with JavaScript, you could set it to run with Notepad. So, uh, so in the event that someone did click on a link in an email, uh, it would open a notepad and wouldn't be able to propagate. So you can set it to open there and then we can set notepad. And just put any text in there. Click OK. So that's now in place. So we just go to our assignments again. Click there and then assign this to our Citrix users, the JavaScript file type association. Okay, so that's there then. So I'll just update my agent again. Okay, back on here. Now I've opened this ransomware now, it should open with Notepad instead. Yep, so it tries to open Notepad, so it can't, it will not propagate if someone does accidentally click on a JavaScript file in an email.